um, just just over four years now. Mm-hmm. I think September 2010 was my first ever gig. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so four years in about three months or something like that. Uh, it's uh, it's four years now yep. since I started. The, the official story is four years. I, I did do a gig in 2008. And then I kind of never came back to it for a while. But uh, yeah, four years. Yeah, sweet. Uh, so I was born in Melbourne yep. to uh, parents who are from, my dad's from Sri Lanka, my mum's from Malaysian, but she's like Sri Lankan ethnicity. Yeah. So uh, it's an interesting one because I, I identified as Australian for a long, for all of my childhood, but but I knew that I had this Sri Lankan background. It didn't really mean anything concrete to me because we never went to Sri Lanka and my parents didn't have a lot of, they lived quite Western lifestyles. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, it was, so it's something that I'm thinking about more now than I did when I, when I grew up. The 19 years of my life was in Sri Lanka. Mm-hmm. So there's no way it doesn't affect right. me at all. You know what I mean? Ob- obviously it does kind of filter through, but I do have a very strange relationship with, between my ethnicity and the comedy that I do because I felt initially when I started, there was almost like a pressure to do ethnic humor. Mm. Like I felt that, you know, it's almost expected of me to do ethnic humor. And, and for whatever reason, it's not necessarily what I wanted to do. Okay. Like I had, no, I had no issues with people who do that. Like, I, like if you take the big names like Russell Peters, mm. uh, you know, he's very much racial based humor. And I love it. I think it's really funny. Uh, you know, I think he's extremely talented. Uh, but it was, it's just not for me, okay. you know. Whereas when I started, when I used to do, like, uh, workshops and stuff, uh, when I started out, I went to the Comics Lounge workshop. And uh, a feedback I'd get constantly is, like, oh, you should talk about, you know, Sri Lanka more, talk about being brown more. And I was like, no, I, I, I want to I talk about, you know, relationships and my, my, my battles with homophobia or whatever you know what I mean like the, the, those for me were more interesting and yeah. and for for a long time I pretty much had like a no I'm not going to do anything race-based it's funny so at the start when I was doing the one-liners and the wordplay I think I got a few people talking to me saying like hey you should you should talk about your background you should talk about your ethnicity that's what people want to hear about um, and I don't know whether that was just a, a really polite way of saying hey no one wants to hear too many puns, or if it was like like genuine advice, I don't know. Uh, but but to me, because I always identified as like an Australian guy growing up, it, I was kind of like, no, I don't want to fit into any stereotype. I just want to talk about what I find funny. Yeah, is it um, is, is, is it frustrating or, or to hear it, that or? Well, I think it's frustrating when people people are implying that I should be doing like stereotypical like accents and stuff like that. Cause I, I don't think that's, that that's not even truth in comedy. Cause my parents don't have an accent. Like I feel they, they both kind of spent a lot of time in the UK when they were in their, their uni days and stuff like that. So they're, and they were, when they grew up in Asia, English was still kind of the, the mode of, of teaching. Mm. So they, they're actually quite Western in, in the way that they live, I guess. Yeah. So I feel, maybe I feel a bit cheated because I can't do those jokes <laughs> about my parent having an accent. Yeah, I was ripped off. But, uh, but no, it's, to me, like taking advantage of, of accents and stereotypes is, is a quick route down towards hack kind of material. For me, I think if I had done... If I do jokes about race and stuff, it's because what the audience is expecting. Mm-hmm. And it also, in a way, I felt, and I, I hope this is not offensive to anyone who does that type of, type of humor, but for me, I felt it's a little bit of an easy pass. Okay. Like, I feel like because I'm in a, in a predominantly white audience, and if I talked about um, my ethnicity, uh, that I would get, like, they're, they're going to be on board quicker because it's like, oh, oh something different, something interesting, like... And I was worried that the joke might not, the jokes that I'd be telling around that topic wouldn't be as good, but the reaction from the audience would make me think it's good. Like, I feel like, you know, it would just be like rocket boosters on any punchline, just adding 
uh, you know, an accent to it or something like that would just send it through the roof because people, I mean, people do enjoy that style of humor. Whereas for me, I kind of wanted to learn how to write a joke because it's funny. Like I wanted the joke to be funny on paper yeah. and not funny just because I'm brown. It, it, and it comes back to that probably why the strongest comedy is that truth in comedy. Because if you can find what's unique about you, uh, the challenge is to find, I think, stories that are unique to you but are also relatable to, if that makes sense, like something that an audience can relate to, but it, it's, a, it's a different twist on it or a different perspective or take on it. And uh, I, I find, uh, like I know you guys are talking to Dill, for example. Yeah. He, his story is kind of coming to Australia from Sri Lanka so that it's the, the take of being a migrant to Australia. Um, whereas I think my distinction is uh, growing up in Australia with like migrant parents, but kind of identifying as Australian and yeah. growing up with that, really realizing that I was different initially. Yeah. And, and, and then the awareness that I oh, actually, I am different. And then trying to embrace that mm. uh, is, I think it, it has helped give me a bit of a, a unique perspective to kind of bring to my comedy. It's very interesting to me because, yeah, I, I wonder whether it does, because any comic wants that point of difference. You know, and if you're, and the majority of comedians in Australia would be straight white male, and the biggest struggle for them is to to try and find that you know niche or yeah. that voice or point of view that's different to everyone else in the lineup. So in a way, I should be lucky that I have such a clear point of difference, whether it's my um, skin color or weight or whatever. Um, but it's almost those are that's almost the reason why I don't want to do it because it feels like mm. it's already there, it's there for the taking. But maybe if I worked harder at the material, I can find it through the material rather than through physicality. 